In this YouTube channel, I've completed Elden Ring and its DLC multiple times, with many different weapons constantly seeking for the ultimate high damage build, for the most broken build of all times for PvE scenarios. Today I'm going to show you what I believe according to my tests and experience are the 8 best builds of this amazing game so far. As a side note, all the gameplay footage you can see in this video is from New Game Plus to New Game Plus 7. Each build will perform slightly different depending on the New Game Plus cycle you are playing. Keep in mind that this damage variation must be slight even in New Game Plus. 7. If you are dealing a very low amount of damage compared to the video, you must be skipping an important feature of the build like the buff routine, which is something people tend to constantly do. To avoid such situations, be sure to watch the entire video so you don't miss any significant detail of the builds. To open this list we have the Blasphemous Blade, an extraordinary greatsword that is extremely easy to use and can be obtained very early. This weapon scales primarily with strength and faith, however I will always prioritize faith in most instances since the main reason to use this weapon is its healing capability that shines mostly when using the unique skill of the weapon, Taker's Flame. Each time we use this ability, we will deal a ridiculous amount of fire damage that will only scale from our faith levels, and we will recover a really significant amount of HP. This way, every type of player can easily destroy the toughest bosses of the game quickly. For that reason, among the less experienced player, this weapon might be considered the best, but this Grazer is not the best of the game when it comes to deal high damage. I'd say that it's the most balanced weapon between high damage and survivability, that's why it didn't get a better spot on this list, but it's actually one of my favorite greatsorts. For this build, we will use the Blasphemous Blade on plus 10, any skill we have available to cast our buffs. We are going to use the Poison Hand that will increase our damage by 7.5% with each Poison proc, and we are going to use the Deadly Poison Perfume Bottle to proc poison on ourselves. We are going to use the Rakshasa's Armor Set and the Mushroom Crown. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Fire Scorpion Charm, the Kindred of Rod's Exultation, and the Talisman of the Dread. In our Flask of Bunros Physic, we will use the Blood Soaking Crack Tear and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear. This weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina so be sure to craft some pickle torte legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. And if you want to buff while fighting, you can use the rough fetid pot and cure the poison with the neutralizing boluses. To obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 26 on mind, 40 on endurance, 33 on strength and dexterity, and 80 on faith. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs, but you can also use Flame Grandia Strength if you don't want to take any extra damage. And we are going to use our Scattery Blessing on the level 20 to get the max performance possible in DLC scenarios. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. In the next place, the Godsess Greatsword come back to show some real potential combined with the spinning Gravity Thrust Ash of War. For some reason, this colossal sword has always been a really good option for a bleed build cause just with a few hits it's capable of proccing this status effect. And now with this Ash of War that allows you to deal multiple hits at a very fast rate, with this high damage weapon while dealing pierce damage at the same time, well, you will be able to delete all your targets easily. Besides of being really good as well against bosses and enemies immune to bleed, the only downside of this weapon is that you require a decent awareness of your target's moveset to not get completely destroyed while performing this ability. In this case, we are going to use the Great on plus 25 with the spinning gravity thrust Ash of war on the bleed affinity and we need any seal we have available to cast our buffs, and if you want you can use any weapon with the Raptor of the Mist Ash of war to easily dodge the a dance light explosion attack and the commander Gaius charge attack. You can equip this additional weapon with any other build but I will not mention it on each one. We will do the same for this weapon with seppuku, you can use any weapon with seppuku to start the fight with the bleed buffs active but it's completely optional. We are going to be rocking the Rakshasa's armor set with the white mask. The most effective talismans for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodin Windsor Insignia. In our flask of Wondrous Physic we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. With this build we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic, and this weapon devours stamina so be sure to craft some pickle turtle necks to boost your stamina regeneration speed. The best stats for this build are 50 on vigor, 20 on mind, 40 on endurance, 80 on strength, 12 on dexterity, 25 on faith and 45 on arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Strength are going to be our main buffs. If you want to use the Swarm of Flies to proc bleed faster, feel free to do it, and be sure to have your Scattery Blessing on the level 20 to deal the max damage possible on the DLC bosses. Moving forward to the next place we have the Carrion Sovereignty Ash of War, probably the strongest magic damage skill of the entire game. This fantastic ability deals a huge amount of magic damage capable of destroying every type of enemy insanely fast, ignoring the fact 
fact that some of these enemies are resistant to magic damage, besides of being extraordinary to deal stones of stance damage opening the possibility to play around critical hits. The best part of this Sasha War is that it can be used with multiple weapons, which makes it incredibly versatile and easy to use. However, to get the best results when using this amazing skill, the best weapon classes to apply it are the Great Swords, Corpse Great Swords and Great Katanas. In this case, we are going to use the Knight's Great Sword on plus 25 with the Carrion Sovereignty Ash of War on the Magic Affinity and then we have available to cast our buffs and we are going to use the Azure's Cleanstone Staff to cast our spells faster. I'm going to be rocking the Spellblade set but you can also use the Rakshasa's armor set perfectly fine. The, the main difference between these two armor sets is that the Spellblade set only works with the skill and the Rakshasa's armor set boosts your overall damage. The most effective talismans are the Shard of Alexander, the Godfrey Icon, the Magic Scorpion Charm and the All Lord's Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear. This weapon consumes a lot of stamina as well so be sure to craft some pickle turtlenecks to boost your stamina regeneration speed. And to deal the max damage possible with this build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 30 on mind, 40 on endurance, 25 on strength, 12 on dexterity, 80 on intelligence, and 33 on faith. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri, and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. Scarlet Blessing on the level 20 as well. What will be of a top video without a broken bleed build, right? Well, this is a build that I will call nasty rather than broken, as it's probably the easiest to use of this list, while also being one of your best options if you don't want to struggle a single time in your journey through the land of shadows. The reason why this build is so strong is the extremely fast power stats moveset of the spear class. With only 3 inputs, it's capable of deleting the entire HP bar of the most difficult bosses of the game easily. The result will be the same with the majority of bosses since it deals spears damage, allowing you to perform effectively regardless of the type of enemies you are facing. In the same way, it's one of those few builds that will actually be benefited from the Twin Blade Talisman, a very powerful talisman that is rarely seen in OP builds because of its limited applications. In this case, we are going to use two Blood Fiends 4 on plus 25 with the Seppuku Ash of War on the Occult Affinity and then easily we have available to cast our main buffs. We are going to be rocking the Rakshasa's armor set once again and the White Mask. The most effective talismans for this build are the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodden Windsor Insignia and the Twin Blade Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Soaking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear and this build devours stamina so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the max performance of this weapon, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 80 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 30 on Strength, 10 on Dexterity, 25 on Fate, and 99 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Strength are going to be our main buffs. And if you want to proc bleed faster, you can use the Swarm of Flies, it's a very useful spell. Scattered Blessing on the level 20 as with any other build. Since the release of the DLC, Pierce Damage has become the new PvE meta, with a fair reason. All enemies of the game are vulnerable to this type of damage, some a little bit less than others, but this is the only type of damage that that can't be useless compared to the standard slash or strike damage depending on the scenario. Pierce damage will always be effective for two main reasons. It is quite strong against heavily armored foes and when you hit the enemy with a weapon that deals pierce damage while they are performing an attack, you will deal 35% more damage. This happens cause the game's system reduces the resistance to pierce damage of all enemies including the player itself by 35% when executing an attack animation. If you are a PvP enjoyer, you might be more familiar with this feature. But as PvE players, this might be fresh knowledge you can use to be able to deal a ridiculous amount of damage quickly. Now we will use the Mesmer Soldier Spear on plus 25 with the Royal Knight's Resolve Ash War on the Quality Affinity and then easily we have available to cast our buffs. With this build we are going to rock the entire Rakshasa's armor set for a total of 8% damage boost. The best talismans for this build are the Axe Talisman, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman, the Spear Talisman and the Millicent's Prosthesis, but you can also use any other talisman you find useful. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we will use the Blood Sucking Crack and the spike crack tier. With this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic. But if you don't like crafting, you can also use Flame Grand Strength perfectly fine. This weapon devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Picket Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 80 on Mind, 4 on Endurance, 74 on Strength, 55 on Dexterity, and 25 on Faith. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Strength are going to be our main buffs. And once again, we are going to be using our Scattered Tree Blessing on the level 20. Leading the top 3, we have the Marais Executioner Sword, what I believe is the strongest gracer of the entire game, a weapon from the base game that can be obtained quite early without having to face any major boss. This blade is one of the 9 legendary weapons of the game. Unlike the rest, this one actually feels like a unique and special weapon. It has a very cool design, a unique art 2 moveset, and it scales of strength and arcane. Anyways, what makes this weapon great is its unique skill, Eochite's Dancing Blade, probably the best unique skill of Elden Ring. This brutal ability turns the weapon into a Bluetooth 
of Power Drill that drains your target's HP bar in just a few seconds. When using this ability, you will deal multiple hits in a very, very short time gap, which allows you to get the most out of the successive attacks buffs, making of this great sword a complete monster. This time, we will use the Marais Executioner Sword on plus 10 and any skill we have available to cast our buffs. I'm going to be rocking the Dancer's Armor set that will increase the damage of the skill Eochai's Dancing Blade by 10%. And the most effective talismans for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Godfrey Icon, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. In our Physic Flask, the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear will grant us the max performance possible. With this build, we will not deal only physical damage, but in some fights, Hall of Shabrir doesn't last enough time. In that case, we will use Blood Boy Aromatic. And this weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina, so you can craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 20 on Mind, 35 on Endurance, 80 on Strength, 14 on Dexterity, 33 on Faith, and 40 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. But if you don't want to take any extra damage, feel free to use Flame Granny Strength as well. And once again, we are going to use our Scattered Blessing on the level 20 to get the max damage possible in the DLC. I truly love Lightning, it is definitely my favorite elemental damage type. Sadly, despite of being so cool and fun to play, most Lightning builds are not even close to be part of the meta, with the exception of this one. Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike is the most broken incantation of the game, and it's not open to discussion. It's so destructive it's not even fair, and that's exactly why I love it. However, it's quite difficult to use against fast enemies, and if I had to describe the DLC in one word that would be speed. The bosses in Shadow of the Earth Tree are insanely fast that if you try to perform the charge version of this incantation, you will get your cheeks smashed in a finger snap. For that reason, we will also use the Knight's Lightning Spear, a new incantation that allows you to deal a very good amount of stance damage. The strategy is going to be quite simple. We will use the Priestess Heart to get into Dragon form. We will use Knight's Lightning Spear to force an opening that will allow us to finish our target with a nasty fully charged Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. This one is quite unique. We are going to use two Gravel Stone Seal on plus 25 and the Flower Stone Gable on plus 10. And this weapon is completely optional. Feel free to use it if you want, but I feel like the debuff of the Flower Dragon Bolt is not working properly right now. But if you want to make your own test, feel free to do it. In this case, we are not going to use any armor set because we will be rocking the Priestess Heart, which is a dragon transformation that will increase the damage of the Dragon Cult incantations by 20%. The best talismans for this build are the Lightning Scorpion Charm, the Ghost Free Icon, the Faithful Canvas Talisman, and the Flux Canvas Talisman. In our Flask of Wonders Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Lightning Shrouding Crack Tear. A great alternative for the Blood Sucking Crack Tear is the Stombard Crack Tear. This one is going to be insanely helpful in the DLC. And the incantations we will use will consume a lot of stamina, so you can craft some Pickle Turtle Necks to increase your stamina recovery speed. The best stats for this build are 50 on Vigor, 35 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 15 on Strength, 18 on Dexterity, 99 on Faith, and 15 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. Knight's Lightning Spear and Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike are going to be our main source of damage. Scattership Blessing on the level 20 as well to deal the max damage possible in the DLC. And as the winner of this top, we have the Sword Spear combined with the Deflecting Heart Tear. This is what happens when you incorporate deflections in Elden Ring. As weird as it sounds, this is currently the most broken build in all of Elden Ring. With this build and a very basic buff routine, you can get up to 27k damage in a single hit, which I find quite stupid. However, in order to get the max performance possible with each hit, we have to successfully deflect at least 4 enemy attacks to boost our next guard counter by 80%. In the same way, we have to combine this damage buff with Royal Knight's Resolve. This is a little bit complicated to perform, especially if you are not very used to the deflection mechanic. Having played Sekiro will help tremendously to understand how this build works, and it will allow you to develop the max damage possible in a single hit. If you decide to stack more buffs with this build, you can easily one-shot the toughest bosses of the game and the DLC. This fantastic build will go like this. Sword lands on plus 25 with the Royal Knights Resolve Fashion War on the Heavy Affinity, any skill we have available to cast our main buffs, and in this case we will actually need a weapon with Seppuku because we are going to start the fight with the Bleed buffs active. Once again, we are going to use the Rakshasa's armor set and the White Mask. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman, the Curved Sword Talisman, and the Spear Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Deflecting Heart Tear. With this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boy Aromatic. But if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Flame Grand Strength. And this build doesn't consume a lot of stamina, but if you miss the deflection and you block, you will actually need some fast stamina recovery speed. In that case, you can craft some Pickle Turtle Necks. To get the most out of this build, we are going to use 60 on Vigor, 20 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 99 on Strength, 18 on Dexterity, and 25 on Faith. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Strength are going to 
to be our main buffs. And remember to use your Scattershy Blessing on the level 20 to deal the max damage possible to the hardest DLC bosses. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of these builds. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I'll see you in the next one.